We're at the American College of Physicians, publishers of the Annals of Internal Medicine. And the Physicians Committee is filing a federal complaint with the Federal Trade Commission against the Annals of Internal Medicine. Why? Because they're not telling you the truth. They've done a release far and wide to the media saying, there's no need to cut down on meat, including the most unhealthy meats, for good health. That's irresponsible. We're going to stop it. Welcome to a very special Facebook Live edition of the Exam Room Podcast brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Hi, I am the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll, joined by Dr. Neil Barnard and our Vice President for Legal Affairs here at the Physicians Committee, Mr. Mark Kennedy. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Sure, thank you, Chuck. Yeah, glad to be here. This is an important day. Uh, as we talked about, Neil, earlier in today, it is past 5 o'clock here on the East Coast here in Washington, D.C. The embargo is lifted, and that means that right about now, there is going to be a lot of buzz, a lot of humdrum all around the Internet, all on your TVs, your radio, all over the place about some health topics that I think are, are slightly controversial. And I really I don't find it to be too coincidental that here we are in 2019 and the USDA is coming out with the new guidelines in 2020 and the same group who is responsible for what it is we're about to talk about is the group that released the study saying, well, bad fats aren't bad. And that, of course, led to that famed article in Time magazine that said butter is back in 2014. And what happened the next year? New dietary guidelines. Talk to yes. me. What, uh, what is going on today? Okay, uh, here's, here's, here's what's happened. There's a, a private organization called Nutrirex, as in Nutritional Recommendations. And they submitted a whole group of articles to the Annals of Internal Medicine, which is a generally well-respected journal, except for the fact that they did do, they did publish the uh, article you're speaking of in 2014 saying um, you can eat all the saturated fat you want, and, and that article was shown to have lots and lots of flaws and needed to be corrected and so forth. But anyway, apart from that, um, the uh, Annals of Internal Medicine accepted these articles, and what they showed was this, uh, four different meta-analyses. Uh, where you combine the results of prior studies. There's not, nothing new, but they reanalyze the old studies mm -hmm. on what happens if you reduce meat and what happens if you reduce processed meats like bacon and hot dogs and ham and sausages. And what they found is what everybody knows, that you reduce the likelihood of mortality, likelihood of cancer, likelihood of developing uh, a stroke, having heart disease, uh, reduce the risk of diabetes. Reducing meat is a good idea. And not only did you get these reductions, but they were statistically significant, meaning it's not chance. But then they also published a paper asking omnivores what they thought about meat uh, and looking at a variety of studies that have, have looked at this. And what they found is that, by and large, omnivores like eating meat and, and they think it's important. And, you know, it's, it's kind of these uneducated ideas we all grew up with. You know, it's your source of protein. Right. And so they then issued one more paper that said, here's our recommendations. And the recommendations have galvanized every health organization against them. Because what they said, I'm not making this up, was the reductions in cancer risk and the risk of having a stroke and having a heart attack and having diabetes are not worth having to give up meat. In wow. other words, you love meat so much and you're so unlikely to, to do it that what the recommendation was that Americans should continue to eat meat, including processed meat at current levels. So whatever bacon and sausage you're eating, just keep on because reducing cancer is not important to you. Not that important. Now, these were, I, I hasten to add, these were not the recommendations of the Annals Journal right. uh, or of the American College of Physicians, which owns them. These were the recommendations of these people who submitted the articles and managed to get them published. And it makes absolutely no sense. So, so they're not endorsing it, but, but, but that's what has come out. And, and what you're going to see is tonight on the news, tomorrow morning in the newspapers, and everywhere is controversial, controversial headlines that a uh, medical journal says, don't, eat, uh, don't worry about meat. Meat won't hurt you. Eat all you want. And that's what has cancer researchers 
and heart dis research is just wringing their hands. Yeah, and, and that's just it. I mean, I am baffled by this because we've been doing the show for nearly two years. And for a lot longer than that, obviously, there's been research done that basically says the exact opposite of what these researchers today are claiming. We are talking about statistically significant reductions that were in peer-reviewed journals time and time again, highly credible sources. I'm, I just don't know how they arrived at this particular yes. conclusion. Well, well, let me be clear that when they did the meta-analyses that are published in the Annals of Internal Medicine, they showed that cutting out meat was a good idea, too. Oh. Um, they, they, no, they didn't dispute that. Um, in fact, I'll read you the numbers. They, uh, there were several of these studies that were published. One said uh, reducing meat intake by just three servings a week, if that's all you do. Just that alone cuts cardiovascular mortality 10%, stroke by 6%, myocardial infarction, that's a heart attack, by 7%, type 2 diabetes by 10%. If you cut out processed meat, just three servings a week that you're not having, um, cuts uh, diabetes 12%, myocardial infarction 6%, uh, cardiovascular mortality 10%. So th th they agree, they, they validate it. The crazy part is when they came out with what they recommend, it's don't do anything. Don't do any. Continue to eat just as you are, and so that's what, that's what has health authorities puzzled. And so the editors at Journal, I just got on the phone with a uh, one of the big outlet editors, and they said, "What are we supposed to report? We can't report." Uh, authorities say, "Don't eat meat." Um, what's the news here? And the news here is is uh, man bit dog. <laughs> uh, he, you, know, you know, when a dog bites a man, that's not news. Right. But when somebody comes out and, you know, man bites a dog, that's news. So that's what's happened here. Is somebody made the ill-advised uh, recommendation that people should just keep eating risky things. Um, and that's not a good idea. But but I hasten to add, the, the, the data don't disagree. They, the, clearly reducing meat is is a good idea. There's no, or and getting rid of it completely right. is even better. Right. And this is not an official recommendation of the journal, but but they accepted this article, and all the media, and every meat eater you ever talk to, is going to run with this and say, "See, I was right." Well, here's here's the thing. As a former journalist, and and I should say that I've worked for some major news outlets before coming to the Physicians Committee. I can tell you that the headlines are going to be driven and written, and these articles, by and large, will be written by journalists who are well-meaning, but do not have a background in health, do not have a background in medicine, and thus are largely unable to accurately interpret the facts. Well, here are the articles. Um, this is a big slew of them. They're not going to read them. That is quite um, a... No, no. Um, I have read them, and, and in fact, uh, if you go to pcrm.org, I hope I can say this, Yes. Um, you will see the information there that distills it um, in plain English very, very quickly. I hope people have a look, um, because all the information is there. Um, can I say one other thing? By all means. Um, because I want to make sure that Mark comes in because yes. because the frosting is on the cake hmm. with regard to uh, what Mark and his team have done. But one of the authors of one of these papers came out and said, excuse me, this is just wrong. Really? Yeah. His name is John Stephen Piper. He's a Canadian researcher and does a lot of meta-analyses. And the, this group brought him in to do the meta-analysis. And they found health benefits of avoiding meat. What they did not let him see was the conclusions that they came up with saying, don't reduce meat. And, really? and when he found out, he asked the journal to not publish it. He said, this is completely wrong. I'm totally opposed to this. But what do you think the journal is doing anyway? Okay. Um, they're, just, they're just rolling over him. Wow. Um, in my view, this is irresponsible. From a health standpoint, it's terrible. But from a journalistic standpoint, you've got a, a medical journal here. Are they just chasing clickbait? They certainly got a lot of it uh, when their butter is back thing came out uh, a few years ago. I, I, I don't know what their motivation is, but, um, but it's not right. Well, speaking of clickbait, now's a good time to say that we are doing our best to get the facts out using a hashtag campaign of our own called Cancer Causing Clickbait. So if you see this in the media and you want to get involved, you want to voice your opinion, do so using the hashtag cancer causing clickbait. We want to get that part trending. Now, Dr. Barnard, as you've been talking about what they're releasing, very alarming. And Mark, this is where you come in. Uh, you and your staff have actually filed a petition with the FTC regarding the publication of this research, correct? That's right. What's happening here is that the uh, journal has been promoting this new 
issue with some ridiculous language. And let me just read you some of it because it's, it's outrageous. So it leads with this. New guidelines. No need to reduce red or processed meat consumption for good health. And then it continues and it talks about their findings. And then it ends with this. Those that seek to dispute the Nutrarex findings will be hard-pressed finding appropriate evidence with which to build an argument. So they are using this um, distortion of the findings, and they're using it to promote their journal, to bring people to their journal to either subscribe or to buy it or to look at their website and look at this issue. And so it really is cancer-causing clickbait, as you said. So what we did earlier today was we filed a petition with the fe- – uh, the f- sorry – the uh, Federal Trade Commission. Yeah. And this is something we've done in the past to stop deceptive advertising because this is what, what they've done. A deceptive advertisement is a public communication that is deceptive. And the idea with the FTC is that it's going to step in and stop deceptive advertisements because they have the capacity to change the consumer behavior. And <laughs> that's the last thing we want here is consumers taking on the when it's deceptive, that is, that's an advertisement. And that's exactly what the FTC is there to stop. And and let, let's follow up on this again. We've we filed similar petitions in the past with success, correct? We did. Uh, several, well, about 15 years ago now, the uh, dairy industry got together. And they this was an actual quote that they were going to address the opportunity presented by the obesity epidemic. And basically what they started to say in a series of advertisements that went on for several years was that if you consumed dairy products, three servings per day, you would lose weight. And of course, that wasn't supported by the, the science or even common sense. And we filed a petition with the FTC, which stepped in and stopped the advertisement campaign. Dr. Barnard, I, I want to come to you next. Here's the big question for me is, what do we know about this group? Where are they getting their funding from? Are there any conflicts? I don't know the answer to that, and we've been trying to understand it. Uh, Nutrarex is run by a guy named Bradley Johnston, um, who was really kind of the, the driver behind this. Um, and when you look at the funding, they say no funding. You know, I don't know how you get these people to all work for free, <laughs> um, but um, I don't know. And when you look at Nutrarex's website, you don't see funding either. Um, where is the money come, coming from? I honestly have no idea. And I'm not alleging anything because I just don't know. But it's uh, it's very peculiar. That is peculiar. Most times, it's it's relatively easy, I would think, to kind of trace the source of the funding for research. I know. Well, it's got to be declared, right? Um, in the research articles, in this case, they just say there's nothing. Interesting. Um, I know that there were a lot of facts, as we discussed at the top, that were omitted from this particular analysis. I think that right. we we sent out a. Uh, a summary of this, at least internally to the staff. Um, And if we could just go over some of those studies, I know that there was a 2012 study from the Harvard School of Public Health that found that eating red meat, quote, increases the risk of dying prematurely, including from heart disease or cancer. And and this was a study that looked at over 121,000 individuals. I mean, that's a pretty large sample size. Well, it it really is. And I should be clear, the the authors of these annals reports aren't disputing any of that. Right, right. They're saying, yes, uh, processed meats cause cancer. Uh, In effect, um, red meat causes cancer, heart disease. It contributes to all of these things. Um, What what their message, if if you read it, is they'll say, by by, by cutting down, Let's say you have three fewer meat servings in a week. Mm-hmm. They say the benefit, benefit of that with regard to reducing cancer and reducing heart disease, not huge. Um, maybe the evidence is a little shaky. So given the fact that people don't want to give up meat, just continue. Now, you could, they could have said, we don't really trust the, the evidence. We need more, more evidence. We're not going to make any recommendation. That wouldn't have been, been smart, but, but they went, unfortunately, way beyond that. Right. They said you should continue to eat meat. So what if a child in school um, is learning about nutrition or something in a class, and they, they, they bring in the headlines? And the, the child might be one to go vegetarian because they're, or vegan because their family's health conscious, or they have a heart for animals, or they're an environmentally oriented person, or whatever the case may be. They're getting the message. Right. You should not do that. You should continue to eat meat. Um, and that is, of course, uh, 180 degrees wrong. Well, I think that when these headlines hit, there's going to be a lot of question marks at the end of it. Is red meat, is processed meat really bad? 
question mark. So if you have a question as well, why not jump in with your own right here on Facebook Live? Go ahead and post that below. Before the end of the show, we will uh, do our best to get to as many of these questions as possible. Um, l- I mean, this is especially with October coming up and, and there being this tie with breast cancer being Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Why don't we touch on that a little bit since I have you here? What do we know about yeah. the link between meat and breast cancer? Well, I'm glad you're asking about that because we do have a new campaign, as, as you know, and you've talked about here, Let's Beat Breast Cancer. Tomorrow is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And most people think about processed meat like bacon. By the way, turkey bacon is still bacon. Uh, chicken, sausage, all these things are in the carcinogenic category. Mm-hmm. Um, they, most people think of them as being related to cancer in your intestinal tract, mm-hmm. and that's right. But breast cancer is also linked to processed meat. And so the timing couldn't be worse, that at the time when we're, we're hopefully giving women the information that they need to protect themselves from breast cancer, you have this out-of-the-blue message saying, ignore all of that. Um, just go ahead and continue eating meat. It's, it's really unfortunate. We talked about the studies that were omitted, but I, I want to ask you about some really uh, popular diets. And, and I'm not going to put diet in quotation mark for these because these are diets that are often prescribed by physicians when you go in there. You know, if you have high blood pressure, they may put you on the DASH diet right. or the Mediterranean diet. Was any of that taken to a, into account here? Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that because actually when you, uh, when you look at is there value in, in simply reducing meat? And the DASH diet, DASH, D-A-S-H, uh, Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. They were, this study was done years ago, and it's very influential ever since. They were inspired by the fact that vegetarians had lower blood pressure. Mm-hmm. So they thought, well, let's see what happens if you just reduce meat instead of eliminating it and replace it with healthy foods. And what they found is blood pressure does, in fact, fall. Um, and so... Uh, and, and by the way, you don't have to wait a year. Um, th- this was an eight-week study. Very, very quick. Blood pressure falls. Wow. Been hugely influential, not included in any of these reports. Uh, the PREDIMED study, uh, this was a, a Spanish study, but extremely influential because it was the study that really established the Mediterranean diet. Um, what they did is they brought in more, more than 7,000 people. They were all at risk for heart disease. They didn't eliminate meat. They reduced it uh, into a Mediterranean pattern. And what they found is despite the fact that they didn't eliminate it completely, they still found a substantial reduction in cardiovascular risk uh, over time. Uh, There's another study called the DPP, Diabetes Prevention Program. Huge. These are all the the biggest studies in their own own, uh, areas of influence. The DPP looked at right now 30% of Americans have either prediabetes or diabetes. The question is, can you stop that? And what they did is they brought in people who had prediabetes, meaning their blood sugars were inching up. And some of them were given a diabetes drug, metformin. Others were given nothing. And some of them were given a diet and lifestyle change. And the investigators were struck by the fact that metformin reduced the likelihood of getting diabetes a little bit compared to the people who did nothing. But the lifestyle changes were dramatically stronger. Um, and so that changed the whole landscape. Okay, why are we prescribing all these drugs when with a diet change you can do this? Among the steps, we're reducing the meat that you're eating. Right. Not here. Uh, and, and all that was just ignored by the researchers. So in my view, these were not the world's best meta-analyses. But even these, with those limitations, still uniformly showed that when you reduce meat, you reduce cancer risk, diabetes risk, uh, heart risk, and stroke risk. So it's, it's a no-brainer. The thing that everyone is puzzling by is, number one, why did they say to keep eating meat? And number two, why is the press going you know, crazy with this, thinking, all right, let's just all keep eating meat? Mark, stand by. I'm going to come back to you. I have a follow-up on the FTC petition. But since we're talking about this, why don't we do a quick refresher for people who are just assuming that you know diabetes is still tied almost exclusively to sugar and carbohydrates. Meat here plays an important role. Could you just kind of rehash that for us a little bit? Uh, yeah, welcome to the 21st century. I mean, this is, this is an important thing. Many people have had this 1950s idea that I got a high blood sugar because I ate sugar. Um, or I ate carbohydrate that turns to sugar and it got in my blood, so my blood sugar rose. Um, 
that's sort of one third right. Um, your sugars enter your body from foods you eat. That's a natural thing, but the sugar normally goes into your muscles and goes into your liver and other organs to power them. The problem in diabetes isn't that you're having sources of sugar, like fruit or, or carbohydrate. The problem is it's stuck in the blood and can't get into the cell. Mm. And what researchers, including our team, have found that when you eat fatty foods, the fat gets into the muscle cell and stops the sugar from entering. So the answer to diabetes isn't to not eat sugary foods and not eat healthy carbohydrate. You need them for health. The answer is to get the fat out of your cells. Gotcha. And there's your connection. Uh, Mark, follow up for you. So we filed this FTC petition this morning. What happens now? What's the process? Can you walk us through that? Sure. The FTC has the power to investigate. And so that is the first thing we ask for. Take a look at this. Look at the advertisement. Look at any other advertising language that the journal uses to promote this issue. And then take the appropriate action, which we think would be to issue a cease and desist order. And, and that would be something that just says you can't make this public statement any longer. It, that's not about the content of the journal. It's about the content of the advertising to drive people to the journal, to the website, and, and to become subscribers. And in the past, the one... Okay. If you have a question, please don't be shy about posting it below. We will do our best to get to as many of them as possible before the end of the show. Uh, do we know specifically which studies were included in their meta-analysis? Um, typically, when these things are done, they have, they, they, they're not published in the articles, but typically they have supplemental um, uh, uh, studies that you can go online. And, and see, the, see the list of the ones that they uh, consulted in more detail. I mean, they start out with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, and they weed through them. So sometimes those supplemental materials are online. Um, but they do have fairly good uh, tables of the reductions in risk for a whole variety of measures. And it's impressive to see how good for you it is to stop eating meat. It, it's really quite impressive. How busy have your phones been today, uh, knowing that this is coming? Uh, very, very busy. I mean, this is the, had been, frankly, the worst held secret. <laughs> it's been going uh, all weekend. And, and frankly, it's, it's uh, physicians, mm -hmm. health advocates and scientists who are saying, please don't undo the work that we've been trying to do. Because cancer is an epidemic. In young people, when I say young people, I mean 25 to 49, that group, we're seeing colorectal cancer rising, not falling. That's not because of genes. That's because, that's because of bacon right. and sausage and other foods that are very popular in young people who are immortal and they think it's fine and they're getting advertising telling them to continue. But you thought those advertisements came from Arby's and now they're coming from the annals of internal medicine saying, eat bacon and keep it up um, and you can have good health in doing it. And that is, just, well... It's just irresponsible. And so, you know, we don't want to have to go to the Federal Trade Commission and say to our peers, you're hurting people. But that's what we've had to do. Uh, that's, that's so wild to me. And, and the fact that, you know, as, as we discussed, you know, it wasn't long ago that the World Health Organization, the World Health right. Organization came out and said that red and processed meats, carcinog carcinogens, carcinogens. Uh, 2015, class one, uh, group one carcinogens, me meaning that they look at the strength of evidence. And the strength of evidence, it's as, as clear-cut as it is that tobacco causes lung cancer. Mm -hmm. It is that clear and, and uh, established that these processed meats cause colorectal cancer. Um, the AMA, uh, two years ago, came out saying that hospitals should stop serving them. Stop serving them to, to patients, to your staff, to your visitors. Stop serving them. Right. Um, and to have the annals come out and say, ignore all that undo all that, continue it. Now, to, in truth, the annals didn't, didn't say that in, their, in the articles that they, well, <laughs> I mean, they did actually, <laughs> I mean, they issued this, <laughs> they did, I mean, they issued this, this uh, release saying do, do exactly that. But the articles themselves, only the, only the article by Johnston really made that big case that you should keep doing it, but the annals ran with it. Ran with it, and they, and they, they, sh they frankly, I would not have accepted that article if I were the editor. Um, and had you done so, you should, would certainly not be promoting it far and wide. And the result, if, if this is the result, they, the result they wanted, they're getting it. I mean, every single newspaper in the country and, and abroad is going to be covering this whole idea that maybe you should eat hot dogs again. Maybe you should go back to bacon. Maybe sausage is good for your child. Right. Um, that's a death sentence for some people. It, it really, it, it, it just seems so counterintuitive. But I also think that it's important here that we note that it's not just 
the physician's committee. It's not just you that are coming out against this research. I mean, there are just doctors lined up and organizations lined up down the street. Uh, I, I want to tip my hat to um, the True Health Initiative um, run by David Katz at Yale University. 500 uh, research and health experts have joined forces to talk about what is true. And they've really uh, spearheaded that and, and directly asked the editor uh, engaged her uh, the, over the weekend. I was part of these discussions. He said, just wait. Take another look <laughs> at what you're doing. And she just out and out refused wow. uh, to do it. Um, the many researchers at Harvard um, have been sp uh, very outspoken and very, very good on this. Uh, but it's not just them. I mean, uh, even, f frankly, you call anybody up on the phone. I mean, how good is it for you to keep eating bacon and sausage? I mean, your average person knows this is not good. And the fact that a medical journal would put out an advertisement of this type is... Yeah. Surprising. It very. I, I will. I will certainly give you that. Uh, again, if you have a question, go ahead and put it in the comments section below. They are starting to come in. Uh, Jill has the very first question. She just wants to know flat out, gentlemen, what can we do to help? What can we do to help? Uh, thank you. I'm. I'm, I'm going to ask Mark that question. But before before you jump in, um, I think really getting the word out is important. Um, if you get questions from your friends. Um, about, gee, uh, it, because they only hear the tail end of it, so they misinterpret it. Tell the truth. You'll find the truth at pcrm.org. It's there, and you can, you can take that information and share it with anybody. Share that link. Um, let people know these are not government guidelines or official guidelines of any uh, official medical organization. It's mm -hmm. an opinion of a guy named Bradley Johnston who submitted it to a journal and got them to, pub to print it. Um, let them know that this science is very clear-cut that eating meat is not a healthy thing and reducing it or eliminating it is a good choice. And, and even these research studies validated that. And absolutely. And, and don't forget, you know, make your opinions known also on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Use the hashtag cancer causing clickbait. Mark, if somebody wants to go with the more official channels, I know that we filed that petition with the FTC. Is there anything that somebody watching, somebody listening right now can do? For sure, they can pay attention because what's going to happen, as we've been discussing, is that advertisers and, and members of the industry will start adopting this position, and they'll they'll use it as their own. It'll show up in other advertisements, and when that happens, that's when the average consumer, everybody else who has seen the ad, whether it's by the journal to promote its issue or by the food industry to promote the actual food products, can also submit a complaint because it's all going to be deceptive. I mean, there's no question there. If the science doesn't support it, it'll be a deceptive advertisement. And anything that's designed to attract the consumer to, you know, purchase something they wouldn't otherwise have purchased, that's that's worthy of a complaint to the FTC. So that's what everybody should be prepared for, I think. There you um, go. And there's one other thing that I think would be useful. Um, when you read this most egregious article, um, and this this is the one that says uh, meat eaters won't give it up. I mean, it's it's really quite ridiculous. Omnivores enjoy eating meat. They consider it an essential component of a healthy diet, so therefore keep, keep them going. Um, what, what they're basically saying is, is people will not change. So if you're listening to this program and you have a social network or you have friends and you have in fact changed your diet, um, it's important for people to, to register that of course people will change in the same way as people can quit smoking or a person with other health bad habits can, can change. Um, all of us in this room have, have made changes no uh, into our lifestyle and, and, and profited from that. People will, in fact, uh, embrace change. So, so share that yeah. information. And we have done almost two years' worth of shows now just about change. You know, I used to be 420 pounds and ate meat with every single meal. Doesn't happen anymore. I've had so many people come on who have reversed heart disease after they took meat off of their plate as well and dropped a significant amount of weight. Reversed diabetes. People who were staring death in the face and are now living long and healthy lives because of the dietary and lifestyle changes that they have made. So if you think that change is not possible, just go back and listen to some archives of the exam room and certainly make your point known as well. Interesting question uh, for you, Dr. Barnard, coming from Vincent, who I guess is a very fit advocate uh, talking about bodybuilders and people who need a lot of muscle athletes think that you need to eat meat to get that muscle he says can you recommend some good vegan foods for bodybuilders so they can take that meat off of their plate yeah um, well first of all let me recommend a movie 
<laughs> which you, you know all about, uh, called The Game Changers, because uh, The Game Changers is just now coming out, um, and you can access it. I, I'm sure you probably know more. Tomorrow, more. October 1st, as a matter of fact, yeah. it'll be up on um, iTunes. It, it tackles exactly that issue, and it, it, it talks with many, many athletes about how do you bulk up so it's not flab, it's muscle you're building. Um, and I have to say, uh, the one of the most engaging interviews is with Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was you know, obviously an extremely successful bodybuilder, one of the most successful of all time. And he said, uh, we all grew up with this idea that you need meat protein. But he, then, he, uh, you know, bulls, stallions, uh, elephants, yeah. gorillas, they're not eating steak. Right. You know, they don't eat meat at all. Um, and they get plenty of protein from plant sources. So anyway, the movie is all about that. Um, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics came out on this years ago um, and said, uh, Everybody will get adequate protein from plant sources alone, including athletes. And, of course, if you want to pump up your protein, if you're one of these protein shake kind of people, um, you can get protein from those sources. Just You just pick the vegan products. that They're, they're out there. For sure. Um, the idea that you need meat for protein is really a 1950s idea. Kind of a specific question to these studies coming in from Chris, who writes, based on the recommendations, what does it mean specifically after the two states' recommendations, quote, weak recommendation slash low certainty of evidence. Says, oh, I see. Yeah. What um, exactly does that mean? Okay. Um, what it means really is that they, they will look at, when you do a meta-analysis, they'll say, um, how often did they uh, assess the diets of the participants, for example? And if they assess them many times, they'll call it maybe strong. If they assess it once or twice, they might call it weaker. So they'll, they will then grade the study based on, on these things. If it's a very small group, it's weak. If it's a large group, it's more. Um, so they will, they will typically grade the, the value of, uh, of the studies. Um, however, two things should be said. Um, even with whatever caveats you may have about any individual study, the net result was statistically significant, mm -hmm. meaning it's extremely unlikely to, to be the result of chance. The second thing is, um, you don't even need a meta-analysis. If you give me 50 research participants in eight weeks, I will show you that they will lose weight when you change their diets and that their blood pressure comes down and their lipids improve. Um, all a meta-analysis does is it takes all of those studies, which vary in their methods, and you crunch them together. When you crunch them together, it's sometimes a messier because they differ in the, the ages of the people, the kind of intervention they use, so you do lose some power. But the, the, the value of a meta-analysis really is it shows you consistency. Right. That all these studies show the same darn thing, and that's what we found here. Uh, real quick here, we only have time for a couple more questions, but we're talking specifically about red and processed meats here. But Barbara Moore wants to know, are chicken and turkey and fish, are they okay? Are they healthier to eat? Uh, no, um, which is to say, uh, when when researchers have looked, in, in fact, I think one of one of the most telling studies on this <clears throat> comes from the Adventist Health Study too, and <clears throat> what they did is they looked at people who were Adventists, so they're health conscious, non smoking, teetotaling people, and <clears throat> the meat eaters among them were compared to those who ate meat really in moderation, much less red meat, less meat overall, and then they had people who only ate white meat only ate uh, and fish, nothing more. And they compared them to then ovo, lacto, vegetarians, and vegans. And what you see is when you look at body mass index, the more you get toward um, from a regular meat eater to a semi-vegetarian to a pescatarian to a vegetarian to a vegan, weight just steps down all the way. And so the people who eat only fish are kind of halfway between the meat eaters and the vegans. But what's more important is the same is true with diabetes. The people who eat no red meat and eat only fish and that's it, they do better than the people who eat all kinds of meat all the time. But, the, but they are substantially at higher risk of diabetes compared to the people who don't eat, eat any kind of meat at all. And I guess uh, the, the final statement here is um, there are a lot of people who are chiming in right now who are a little bit upset. The fact that you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube, you know, we're going to get this headline out there. And now what can we do to, you know, kind of get this message retracted? Well, I think uh, just going back to the first question, there is some information on PCRM.org. that will also tell what the average person who hasn't even seen the advertisements from the journal yet could also do to take action. Yeah, that's important. Uh, Absolutely. Go to PCRM.org. I presume that information is, is up as we speak. Um, and it's, it's detailed enough so you'll know what you're talking about, but it's not hugely long. Right. Um, uh, but it'll tell you what you need to know. So what else can we do? 
well, you can use that hashtag cancer causing clickbait. That is very important. Get involved on social media. Use that hashtag cancer causing clickbait. Make your voices known. And the other thing you can do is also subscribe to this podcast, not just a Facebook Live, but it is a phenomenal podcast that we release each and every week up on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify and on Stitcher. And when you subscribe specifically on Apple Podcasts, if you give us a five star rating, that improves our rankings on Apple Podcast. And when that happens, more people see and hear the show and in turn more people then get this information because that shows that they then are sharing it with their friends and their family and saying hey you really need to listen to this message there's a lot of important information here so go ahead and subscribe to the exam room by the physicians committee on apple Podcasts. give that five star rating improve our rankings and that goes a long way toward improving the health of a lot of people in this world can i also uh, encourage people to contribute to if they're on a new site or some site where people are talking about it, go into the comments, register a comment, put in our URL, and so that people can go and see for themselves uh, if they can link to the... Uh the information that we have, let people see for themselves. Absolutely. It should be right up on our homepage uh, as we speak. If it is not, uh, it will be there momentarily. I can, I mm-hmm. can virtually guarantee you that. Uh, final thought from you, Mr. Kennedy. I think everybody's just got to um, do what's the smartest thing, which is pretty much to ignore the message that's coming out from this journal. Dr. Barnard, final words? Um, if anything good comes out of this, I think it is that I have never seen the medical community so galvanized. Even people who haven't stopped eating meat themselves realize that this is an unhealthy message. And so I think the net result of all of this, I hope, will be that people will realize that, yes, there are bad recommendations that come out, and yes, sometimes journals do foolish and even dangerous things, but there is an opportunity to correct it. I call on the annals to fix it. Uh, I mean, they need to do this. We're not, we're not, this is not a game. Um, This is a life or death issue. And it becomes more urgent as time goes on and people have these exposures more and more. So I think the good thing is that people recognize that. And um, the medical community is speaking with one voice and hopefully will be stronger as a result. Absolutely. And just thinking back to five years ago when we had that, uh, another flare up kind of like this, you know, but think about how much progress has been made as far as educating people in those five years. You see such a huge trend in the plant-based community right now. Everybody seemingly is getting on this wagon, and they and they want to improve their health. So they're kind of seeing the light here. That right. gives me hope personally. I, I think you're right, Chuck. And yet at the same time, there are vulnerable people. There are people who only see the headline, and they're not going to take time to read more. Right. And their behavior is influenced that, by that. They pass that along to other people. How many folks have heard, um, I heard that? Um, and that, and that's as far as it goes. And that's the big danger of what the annals has done by sending around this advertisement saying you can eat these things and, and be in good health. Um, so hopefully we'll win this. So no, no safe amount of meat, correct? Right, obviously, but, but <laughs> not, not, only that, not only that, but the idea of continued current levels, I mean, that's just really crazy, and that's what they're saying. So, so do cut down and, uh, um, yeah. and hopefully quit. I got you. All right, gentlemen. Mark Kennedy, thank you so much. Dr. Barnard, thank you so much. You you, are going to be very busy for the foreseeable future, but we appreciate you taking the time to join us here today. My pleasure. Thank you, Chuck. And thank you for listening and watching.